What's going on, Fud Nation, and welcome back. Today, we have an amazing episode for you, where we bring on none other than Eric Crown to answer the question that everyone has on their minds, which is, where is Bitcoin going next? We get it. It's gone from 3,000 to 4,000, 5,000, blown up to 8,000, and now we're fighting for some key areas Then you absolutely need to see this episode. We also cover some of the most important altcoins in the space, which are looking ready for an explosive move. So if you're interested in knowing some of the biggest moves coming up in the market, then you need to do nothing more then strap in and watch this episode. And of course, if you like this episode, I encourage you to subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. Get ready, FUD Nation. This is my exclusive May update with Crown from Crown's Crypto Cave. Big thank you, of course, to Eric Crown over here at Crown's Crypto Cave. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How's everything going with you? I know you just moved house. I hope everything's going well. <laughs> pleasure to be here once again with you, Elliot, and uh, pleasure to be with the good old denizens of FUD TV. Yeah, moving from uh, Helsinki, Finland over here to Tallinn, Estonia. So apartment still getting set up, as you can see. But uh, hey, got to take some time out, do a little bit of analysis. Yeah, well, sounds good. And there's a ton to be done here. Obviously, the last few weeks to months have been extremely exciting. And I think for a lot of people reinforced their belief in this whole cryptocurrency movement, especially those who had been, you know, haggard and torn down, uh, drained by the bear market of 2018, <laughs> are feeling quite re rewarded for their belief and their consistent dedication. Um, certainly, you were uh, very present during the bear market. How does it feel to see this turning of the tides uh, in the market? It's beautiful, man. You know, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, you know, coming from someone who does this as a living, this is, you know, making it a little bit easier, right? For the past uh, couple of months, things have changed around severe, you know, severe changes in the actual analysis of what's going on right now. So to see this whole to see this whole thing turn around really makes you, you know, really, really clarifies that long term belief in cryptocurrency. Uh, it's an incredibly explosive move. I don't think, you know, I, I can't claim that, you know, I knew that this move was going to happen or anything like that. But hey, as a trader, it's been absolutely beautiful. Well, I, I know, and just to uh, vouch for you, and you can go and check this out yourselves, uh, if any viewers of this uh, particular video, but Crown has been you know, longing Bitcoin since almost the bottom. So uh, you know, good for you on that. And of course, it's always nice to be making a lot of an asset that's going up in value instead of down. So. Yeah, yeah, it makes life a little bit easier. And you know, it's it's one of those things as a trader, I'm never gonna catch like the actual low. But uh, I did get my positions, in, it put uh, my first positions in around uh, 3930. And then again, around 5100, you know, just basically going off of the exact same things that we spoke about the last few times that I was on, which you know, my opinion during those times was bearish. But mm -hmm. as a trader, I don't trade my opinion, I trade the I trade the technical analysis. So taking those same trades, um, you know, or, or sorry, taking those same setups that we spoke about before, that's the beauty of, you know, of technical analysis. You know, you don't have to be reliant on an opinion which is fleeting and floating and, you know, can be right sometimes, can be wrong sometimes. You know, this is a lot more, you know, something that we can actually document, right? And, you know, one of those big levels that I was looking forward to for uh, because I think everyone was looking forward to it was the $6,400 or $6,500 right. range there, which was, of course, the big support throughout uh, the last bear market. Obviously, right. we were expecting for it to be resistance. And as soon as it got nuked, I really... Put a lot more capital into the into all the markets, yeah. and that and, was a, and that, and that's a good move. And yeah, that's a good move. Um, so I guess the biggest question everyone's got on their mind now is is what's next because we've gone from about three thousand, a little over three thousand dollars to you know mid eight thousands. It, it doesn't seem to want to stay here. Uh, in your mm -hmm. mind, what what's looking like it's coming next? And again, even if this is bearish, doesn't mean that you know you're overall bearish on the industry, on the coin, or anything. But what do you feel like the, the market wants to do next? Because I, I think that's everyone's big question is, are we about to blast through or is this just some kind of <laughs> or is this just some kind of mental tomfoolery that they're just getting everyone's hopes up again uh, to, to absolutely squash them? Right. So we'll go into the charts in a second. But just, you know, just talking wise, what we've seen over the last uh, couple of months, that is is exactly what you want to see coming out of a bear market as as far as indicators go as far as just chart analysis goes beautiful so i do believe that you know just based off that lows in looking at everything that i look at just about everything suggests the low is in however i will say this just because the low is in doesn't mean that we can't have you know a pretty massive retracement and i do believe that the next move is either going to is is likely to be a massive retracement now the big question is, does it happen from this current area at about 8,200 high, or do we get around to the next level at about 95, 96? 
But I do feel very confident around one of these levels, we will have a pretty significant retracement, uh, 30 to 40%. We can talk about this now. I suppose I should get into the charts. We can actually uh, talk be, about some a little be, bit more. Before you do that, we want everyone watching yep. this video, uh, everyone, one one for me, two for crown. Who do you think is actually holding the crown, uh, no pun intended, for fluffiest hair in crypto? All right. Moving on. <laughs> who's, who's got the fluffiest How hairdo? How dare you? <laughs> who's got the fluffiest hairdo? Me or Crown? I see you, Crown. Trying to, I got called. <laughs> see you trying Someone to take. Someone in my stream earlier called me spaghetti hair. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to take. That. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get into the analysis before I get embarrassed more. All righty, there we go. Um, bringing up the charts and close that. Okay, great. All right, so we'll start off with Bitcoin right here, and uh, like I said. As far as charts go, this is what you're looking for coming out of a massive bear market. Increasing volume to the upside, extremely aggressive moves, which get more and more parabolic as time goes on. All moving averages switching over to a bullish posturing. However, still, you know, some technicalities going on around here. All, all time frames up to a monthly are technically, once again, in an uptrend. Monthly is more of a technicality, right? Because we just haven't had enough time transpire. But uh, assuming that we actually close anywhere above about 7,700 in the next uh, 10, 10 or how many days are in May, whatever, how many days are in May, uh, if we can close above this area right here, we will actually have formed our first higher high for the first time in about a, a year and a half since uh, November over here of 2017. So that would be significant. Now, here's the thing. In order to get an uptrend on the monthly, <laughs> we have to get a higher high, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to get a higher low. So that's the tricky part of it. And um, I think the big question is right now, looking at the monthly, it does look like we actually have a little bit of air room. So higher time frames, you know, switching around a bullish, that is the big notice right now. Now, here's what I'm going to go down into because it seems to me like, like, uh, like one of the topics that you want to be for this video is what's the next big move, right? So I want to explain what I'm looking at here. And uh, I think the best way to do that is to actually go back down to the lower time frames and looking at this formation. You know, we do see a nice consolidation between the 7,000 and 8,000 region. I don't think that there's any real calls to be made in this region. It's just a game of, of support and resistance. Be a scalper, be a trader, be agnostic. Uh, if, I, if I want to put on my drawing tools, I could say that this is, you know, as long as we hold this 7,200 low right here, this is actually a bullish reaccumulation pattern. That also means if we break 7,200, well, <laughs> we're going to initiate some pretty nasty downside. So with that said, uh, we can document both sides. And, and first, we'll talk about the bullish scenario where we actually take another leg up first and then probably have a pretty nasty retracement and that would incorporate this looking like an ascending triangle which you know again is a bullish reaccumulation pattern there is a measure move to be made off this one and that'd be pointing all the way up towards uh this level right here which would put us at our may highs of 2018 uh, somewhere between about, you know, 9,500, 10,000 ish area. These things are never exact. It, it's not like a one to one type thing. You, it, that, it doesn't, I, I love it when people purport it to be like that. It is not, um, but it gets us in the range. And that's all it needs to be, especially when we're talking about big numbers. Um, the more bearish scenario would, would, look some, would, would look more like this, where, sorry, we go back down to lower time frames. And you see us break. Uh, the first warning signal would be would be going back below 7,200. The the big warning signal would be taking out 6,900 right here. If that does happen, I do believe that Bitcoin will initiate a about a 30 to 40 percent retracement from our current area down into likely this 50 you know 5,500 to 5,300 ish range. You notice that I do have a Fibonacci uh, retracement uh, on this right now. This would be the more bearish Fibonacci retracement if we were to head down from here, putting in a high in this current area. Um, and would suggest likely somewhere down around this blue moving average, which is a which is a three seven seven period. That is a very 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 important uh, moving average from a traditional market standpoint. It is you know it's kind of, kind of like the uh, you know I look at it as like the ultimate governor, and that's coming in right around the six one eight Fibonacci retracement. And you do just notice all of these moving averages converge on this area as they do take on a more bullish posturing. So that would be a high candidate for a dump target. Um, if we were to take the more bearish route. Now, if we make it up to 10,000 first, then that target gets, you know, uh, moved up uh, quite a bit actually towards uh, about, I believe, I believe like 5,800 to low 6,000, somewhere in this region. But uh, taking a fib on that, we could just extend this guy a little bit more. And there we go. Again, not going to be super exact, but uh, somewhere around this region, about, yeah, about 5,800 to, to low 6,000, I'd say. So, and so, yeah, go ahead. So the bullish scenario is we make, you know, we peak our, our way up to about the May high, somewhere in the nine to $10,000 right. range. And then we take a nasty retracement. 
The bearish scenario is we take a nasty retracement. So in both the bullish and the bearish scenario, you see some sort of meaningful retracement from the levels we're at. Correct. Yeah, correct. So I do think that um, while, you know, Bitcoin could take another leg, if you are more long term minded and you do feel like you've, quote unquote, missed the boat, understand that these markets don't, you know, they don't operate on like a month schedule. They operate on like a, well, really like a quarterly schedule or a yearly schedule in some cases. And you will get another chance very, very likely. I'd, I'd say the probabilities of this happening are, you know, are quite high. Does that mean that it has to happen? Not necessarily, but we can show some more some more indicators, which uh, which I'll bring up right now. But before we get into that, I do want to denote that the overall changing spades of this chart. Uh, I remember the last few times that I came on, I was really gung ho about looking at this weekly chart right here, and we we were below four thousand at the time. And I said, hey, if we take out the two hundred exponential, on the, uh, you know, um, what what uh, what was it like forty one hundred? I'm going to drastically change my tune on Bitcoin. Well, we take that area out right there. Next, next leg up is, is 5,100. I took a long off that uh, just for verification coming down around here, uh, 3930 on my streamer account. And then again, the next big thing that I spoke about was the monthly, right? The monthly uh, yellow 21 exponential moving average right here. Now, again, another very important thing. This, this was something that I used um, down on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arca, where I would judge if a stock was generally bullish or generally bearish, depending upon how it was juxtap juxtapositioned along this 21 exponential moving average. Just one of those things that tends to work out. And we closed our first monthly above on a decent volume, relative relatively decent volume, you could say. Um, and ever since then, but just been straight up, upwards and onwards. So yes, you know, when it comes to that discussion, never gonna get the actual low, but this is, I just wanna show that, hey, with a little bit of patience, you can get yourself into some pretty damn good trades. You might not catch the actual, you know, extremes, but that's okay, right? Anyways, um, going back into it, and kind of fleshing out this idea a little bit more, I want to bring up my personal indicator. This is one that I designed myself, and it's called the Jewel. And uh, looking at it down around here, this one is historically pretty damn good at on the three-day time frame, calling, calling the highs and lows of Bitcoin. When it flat, it's, it's a very specific setup, but uh, just kind of zoom in on a good one, on a good read. Uh, when we get red in the background, and when we get this light blue oscillator getting into the more critical zone, uh, especially around like an 88 to a 90 read, and then get a negative slope, that is the timing coefficient of getting some very nasty uh, drop downs in Bitcoin's history. I mean, this one right here, a little bit of an outlier as this one ended up being, you know, 70%. I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to retrace 70%. Uh, but going on to this guy right over here, you know, a, a little bit more reasonable, I guess you could say at 33.5%. This guy right over here, you know, another 30% uh, right there. This guy right over here, you know, another 35% another right over there. And, you know, I, I can go through all these, but, uh, it's pro probably boring people by now. Anyways, if you take my word for it, it's about 30 to 40% on average for the non-parabolic um, markers. And currently, we're actually getting kind of a setup right now with that same, with that same ticker. And this light blue oscillator is in the critical zone. It is flashing red in the background. We are not a negative slope on it. So it's not saying that it's happening just yet. And if you but remember... It certainly looks like it's totally tilting... It it's tilting towards that negative slope, though. Yeah, it, it, it is losing a little bit of momentum, no doubt about that. Um, but until it actually fully gets a negative slope, I would not front run a decision like this. It, is, it has not mm -hmm. been kind of the path for that way. Okay. Um, and, uh, and if we go back once again, you know, it's not really until it gets into this more critical range where mm -hmm. those nasty problems are called. Um, in fact, the, 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 the way that it travels into this range before initiating that does correlate with the actual dump, um, historically speaking. You'll notice that we had a one-off right here where it got very shallow, only to about an 81 and a half read on this, uh, on this marker. And uh, yes, I mean, you know, we did have a reaction, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, you know, it's 12%, 12 12% drop down. I mean, that's certainly significant, but it's it's nowhere near a 30 to 40 percent drop down or even more in some cases so we have one other example of this happening in bitcoin's history where uh it gets very shallow into the region and we have it right over here that's very small sliver and uh in a very similar setup where you know it gets right around about an 80 uh, an 83 actually a little bit higher and on price action we do uh something like this about a, about a 12 about a 12 and a half percent drop down right over there but you'll notice after that 
it comes back down and it gets walked up once again into the more critical zone where those very nasty sell-offs have been initiated from and then gets that negative slope forcing us back down and this one lining up for about a you know about a 35 percent drop down so that's tentatively what i think is going on right now and keeping in mind that this is a three-day time frame that would imply that each and every one of these ticks is well three days worth of price action so even if we are going to travel into this more aggressive region it's going to take some time and that actually would likely imply that we do get up to 10,000 first before initiating something like that. And if we were to get up to 10,000, you know, or sorry, about 9,500 to 10,000, again, not being extremely exact. When we talk about these extreme moves, you can't know. It's, I, I, I shudder for the person who, you know, does like the very exact movement. I, I just haven't been able, uh, seen it been able to be done like perfectly, uh, but somewhere right around here, we'll call it. And let's just shave off, you know, for all, you know, for just argument purpose, about uh, 35%. Where does that put us down around 62, 60, 100, 6,200 ish area, which is our lows of 2018. And you would expect that area to be defended if we were to get there. Uh, not only that, but just looking at this chart in general, we have both open and closed our first three day above this white 200 simple moon average. And historically speaking, this is significant. As uh, while it is a little bit more clunky and sloppy, uh, historically speaking, when we did lose it in 2014, that was your more aggressive downtrend and uh, capitulation and then, and then accumulation phase. And when we regained it, that was the beginning of your bullish momentum. Well, Bitcoin over here has regained it as far as I'm concerned. So if Bitcoin, you know, that does give a little bit more, um, you know, make, make me give a little bit more nod to the upside. And of course, the beautiful saying is the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And right now, the trend on all time frames below a monthly is to the upside. So, you know, if, you know, if I had to take a gander, uh, it's probably going to take its time, but um, I would be respectful of the upside here. But uh, but overall, again, removing my opinion from it and going back to what we began this this uh, this video with, very, very cr uh, key critical areas. 6,900 to the downside, I'm bearish for a move down into the mid 5,000s, low 5,000s. Uh, if we take out about, I think it's like 8,300 to the upside, then I'm looking for a move, uh, you know, over the next, transpiring over like the next week or two or whatever it might be towards that 9,500-ish target. Of course, course, this also comes into a confluence with the, you know, with the event that's coming up tomorrow. We have the ETF decision, right, with mm -hmm. uh, with Van Eck. So I'd imagine that uh, whichever way that that gets decided, we're going to see the charts move. That that will be run off of the big market movers. The people with very deep pockets know that you know it's 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 going to be a justifiable justifiable event to really you know <laughs> get the masses and retailers you know ramped up on. So whichever way that 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 cookie crumbles is likely the way that we're going to see this one break. And then after that, fading that move is going to be actually the more the more probable trading move in my in my opinion. So this next one from here it's actually like you know kind of a wild card as far as i'm concerned so essentially you know what we're looking at is is a very bullish scenario but in the end if you're really wanting wanting a better entry point it seems like it's fairly likely that you'll be given that opportunity in the next few weeks um and then also you know did bitcoin ever lose that exponential once it regained it in 2015 even even after, I mean, or I feel like there was a situation in 2015 that almost exactly resembles what we're going through right now. And, uh, right. but we experienced about a 40 to 50% correction off that. Um, and then we lost that moving yeah. average, right? In fact, uh, looking at this, the jewel did call uh, this move as well. And this one was a pretty nasty one, particularly nasty one. Uh, now, trusting wicks from this era, Bitcoin is, is a little bit difficult, but about a 40% drop down, yes. Um, but like I said, trusting wicks from this area uh, or from this era is difficult just because the, you know, if, if you think Bitcoin has a lack of liquidity right now, which it certainly does, it was much worse in 26, or tw sorry, 2015. So, uh, you but know, but there wasn't nearly as much money back then. Um, no, true, true. <laughs> but uh, no. So what I want to ask is essentially that flash crash that happened a few days ago or a week ago now, whatever, uh, uh, yes. was pretty clearly initiated by a single seller that was fat fingering right. or was trying to move the price, most likely to cause liquidations on uh, BitMEX or or some kind of futures derivatives exchange. Um, does that in any way impact what you feel like is going on right now? Because it looked like it looks pretty much like we recovered from that and we're now fighting for the same areas that we were fighting for before. What does the volume signature tell you about how authentic the price action is off of the last few pumps and how you know genuine and authentic the market is reacting uh, to the current price levels and, and the one sort of all the way up through how we got here? Obviously, the flash crash aside. 
Right. So that's a, that's an excellent question, man. So from a traditional technical analysis standpoint, when you see a wick like this to the downside getting bought up pretty much immediately, um, that's that's a bullish signature. I mean, that's 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 bull wick for all intents and purposes. Um, in the way that we got fall through back up to the upside after that, that's you know it's pretty damn damn significant signal. Now here's the thing. You know we can tell ourselves stories which which you were kind of getting into about maybe someone fat fingering. We don't know that because you know Bitcoin's unregulated, so there's no <laughs> there's no fat finger protection like in traditional markets, when I messed up putting in an order, I could just call up the exchange and say, hey, could you bust this trade? You know, uh, you can't do that in Bitcoin land. So if that did happen, um, then, you know, it's, it's just kind of a one off. So either way that you look at it, it you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things you can only play what's in front of you. Uh, to me, this was coming back down and filling the gap on the CME chart, which is a classic play in traditional markets where you know you you get gaps in price action in traditional marks because there's opens and closes there, there's times of no trading going on and uh and cme during the weekends does not trade so mm -hmm. uh so what was it like a couple of weeks ago it, it had a massive gap of about of, of about like 10 to 15 percent yeah something crazy like that 13 percent right and you know during the next week or, or sorry last week uh, on thursday i believe it was we have a massive crash down just very very uh very very fast putting it on the five minute right here and just kind of scrolling back. I mean, this all happened within the span of realistically about, you know, f uh, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. Right. Yep. Uh, that's, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's being bought up extremely aggressively as far as I'm concerned. Um, and filling the gap is, you know, is, is quite a healthy thing. Actually, you're just basically testing this area, making sure that everyone's on the same page and saying, okay, well, if we're, if we're all still buyers there, then we'll, then we'll move back up. So looking at this, um, you know, again, we can only trade what's in front of us, but uh, to me, that's, a, that's a damn good reaction. Not only that, but uh, looking at this right here, we do have an exponential moving average uh, golden cross on the way. Um, within the next uh, day or two, as long as Bitcoin doesn't crash back down to the low 6,000s, actually. And again, this is going to obviously come into confluence with this event coming up tomorrow, which uh, which will move the market. So, you know, it, it, we, we've all seen weirder things happen than Bitcoin, you know, crash down about 1,500 bucks in the span of, uh, span of a few hours, right? So, I Hey, Crown, if you, could, uh, if you could talk a little more into the mic, I think we lost your audio. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, perfect. Got you, now? got you back. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Great. Um, yeah, I... I I think that's amazing, and it's important to to be able to categorize sometimes these pumps, and because obviously some of these are done in times of extremely low volume, and it doesn't seem to be a crowd a crowd funded pump. It's more of a single entity or a single you know movement, right, right. and you know it appears from what I can see and and from what I'm uh, gathering from what you're saying that there's a lot of indicators pointing towards an authentic support for higher prices for Bitcoin, um, and that's very exciting. I think for everyone involved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, a big message of this video is going to be, hey, uh, if you do feel like you've missed out, if you do feel like you've, quote unquote, missed the boat, understand that these markets hope happen over a long period of time. There, there's no real rush. And if you are a true believer in, in cryptocurrencies, um, then you probably will get your chance to uh, to get in at a you know relatively decent price once again. So next question, tinfoil hat theories. I know you're not a fan. I know <laughs> I know you're not a fan of the Mimi of the Elliot Wave, but can we talk a little bit about <laughs> the Elliot um, Elio trades? I got to talk about the Elio Wave. So, it's and good. you know, this isn't this isn't a reference to my hair. Uh, what what is the deal with this Elliot Wave theory and why does it seem so convincing? Just you mean in general? Yeah, Bitcoin? yeah. I mean, it seems there seems to be some argument to the to the five wave push of of Bitcoin. I've seen it made in a convincing way. I'm going to be covering it on an upcoming video. What is your feeling towards Elliott waves? And uh, you know, obviously not for predicting every single move, but you know, does it in your mind uh, summarize in any way market cycles or market psychology? Oh, it can definitely do that. But as far as you know predicting things down to the T that's not something that I've really been able to see been done. Um, and this is coming from, you know, being on the floor of New York Stock Exchange ARCA and then above Chicago board of Ops Exchange. Uh, no one was using that. And it was always talked about in tush tones uh, with kind of like snickers and laughs as the butt of a joke. Um, because, you know, the thing is with Elliott waivers is they, they feel like they can quite literally get the crystal ball out and predict the price. But you're right in the general outlook of it because, what is a five wave thing? Well, that's that's a trending move, mm -hmm. and typically they do come in. They they do typically come in fives. 
but Elliott Wave tries it. I think Elliott Wave tries to do a little bit too much, and it doesn't give it enough room for reinterpretation. And as a trader, in, in my experience and in the experience of, of of my mentors and the people that I've been around, the best mentality to be coming around with it is is agnosticism, not having any sort of personal bias, just letting your letting your edge tell you what to do. So as a trader, not very helpful. As an analyst who has no accountability towards their trades or whatever it might be, well, it's great because you know you can look you can look amazing because you will get it right from time to time. Absolutely. Um, and, and and you know it's it, it's it's one of those things where when people come into technical analysis, and myself included, my, my, myself included, no doubt about that, um, you know, first learning about it, Elliott Wave is what I thought technical analysis would be. I have mm -hmm. the crystal ball. It tells, me where, it tells me where this asset goes, and then I make money. It's just like that. And if you do your analysis right, then you get the right answer. And it really speaks to, towards those engineering types, scientific types, uh, minded people, because uh, the biggest fallacy that I see a lot of people get into is they come from this engineering type background where you have this sort of map of reality where input A plus input B equals you know AB, right? And it makes sense. It's great. It's great for programmers, engineers, all those guys. But I always see these guys struggle as traders because they have this, this need to be right and this need to find the perfect formula to tell them what trading is or, or what's going to happen when that just can't be done. Weird things happen in this game. Weird things happen that you just can't explain sometimes just you know, in the most basic sense. So any sort of analysis or any sort of trading style needs to be, needs to be able to be flexible to adhere to that sort of a thing. And when you get these types of, uh, th these types of theories, which uh, come with very hard concrete type things, it makes, you know, it, it makes a whole outlook very, very difficult over time. And that's why I see a lot of those guys, um, you know, a lot of those guys end up not really making it mm -hmm. uh, or, or what they do or, or what the successful guys do is they'll actually end up incorporating their Elliott wave with more tangible styles of, of classical technical analysis and then use Elliott wave as like a secondary or tertiary type confirmation tool, which can kind of give them a general bias on top of price action. But their trading style is going to be predicated off of, you know, relatively simple things like supported resistance. So that's usually what it comes down to in my experience. Um, and I know, I, you know, I know it's kind of an incendiary topic, and uh, and I hope that I don't piss any, uh, too many people off. But that's just been my experience with looking at this, and uh, and, and especially with my my experience with Elliot Wave and, and Elliot Wavers. Well, speaking on behalf of all Elliots, um, I can tell you that <laughs> I can tell you that it's it's quite all right that you shared your opinion. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, and I think the main, you know, if you're a true trader and you're trying to make gains on a daily basis, uh, I certainly would would agree with you. I think I'm speaking more towards the overall, you know, long term hodler who's looking for maybe a general pullback from a first wave of growth um, and whether that seems to be you know that that by all means it seems to be what everyone's counting on so at least if uh, your you know non Elliott wave based analysis and these Elliott waivers come together and are agreeing that there should be some pullback in the near future that would allow for people to get uh, their positions in again then I think everyone at least uh, would agree that if you're a long-term hodler and you want to enter maybe essentially right now is just not the time you want to be throwing all your eggs in the basket uh, because there there could very well be uh, another chance coming up soon yeah absolutely you know uh, you know as always it's it's always good to have restraint and uh, if Bitcoin does take another leg up here it's just going to initiate even more fomo which we're actually getting pretty damn high right now. Actually, we can document this uh, this in a metric, looking at the crypto fear and greed index, which is currently on the higher side. It's about a seventy three read, um, and it, it goes all the way up from uh, it goes all the way from zero to one hundred. So you know it can certainly get higher, no doubt about that. But historically speaking, for the past year, we this is realistically the highest that we've that we've really been on it. So it is a time to be a little bit more cautious than not, if anything. And uh, and you said it best. You know, if you are a long term if you, if you're a long term minded type person there's no real harm in uh, in waiting around a little bit just you just understand that you know it's, the market does not operate on a daily basis you know go go with the monthly look go you know look no further down than a weekly chart if, if, if anything so now that we've covered Bitcoin I think very very capably I appreciate that can we hop over to some of your favorite uh, altcoins here as we work our way through understanding these markets uh, maybe we'll start start at number two. We'll go to uh, Mr. Buterol, as you would say, Ethereum. <laughs> 
colloquially referred to. Yep, exactly. We can do that right over here. And uh, he's actually looking uh, all right right here above all mage movement averages, about to get a golden cross as well. I put a lot of respect on these things. You know, uh, when Bitcoin got its daily uh, golden cross, it was all the way at um, yeah, about 50, about 5,100, which is why I took it this long uh, at 51, 5150 essentially on my streamer. My main account got a little bit of a be uh, of a better position, but overall, you know, just kind of showing the the evolution of these things. You typically get some sort of a consolidation in this region, just like we're seeing on uh, on good old Beautiful all over here, consolidating right above, beautifully above, actually the three seven seven, the blue moving average right here. Again, very important for long term trend identification, and we're above all major moving averages as we get this cross. So to me, that is a very damn good setup as well. Um, you know, of course, this would this would come with the caveat that it must hold this 377 at about 230, well, let's call it like 234, 235. Um, but as long as it does hold it, these moving averages will gain divergence away from each other. And that will tell us that the bots and algos do want to play this as everything kind of gets settled around and in in the, in the 21 starts to crawl up towards this. It's usually a damn good setup. As far as probabilities go, very, 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 very good. Looking at our higher time frames here, the, the weekly, we have actually just confirmed a close above both the 50 and the 89 and confirmed a bullish cross of the 10 simple and the 21 exponential moving average. And of course, the, I'm saying a bunch of numbers right now, which probably don't mean too much to many people, but you can... You can intuitively understand this most likely, and that is a lower period moving average above a higher period. Uh, a higher period moving average implies overall bullishness, right? Um, so we're getting it slowly switching around. Bitcoin was the first mover, or you know, the first mover as far as like the top ten or, or whatever go. There, there was certainly some, uh, some some random ones here and there that are moving around, but. Um, but you know, Bitcoin goes first, and then we get to judge the relative strength based off these altcoins. Now, now Ethereum's pretty damn strong, actually. In fact, um, you know, as, as far as I looked at this and putting on the volume profile here, uh, this thing can rip. This, this thing can very much rip. Um, yes, we do have a little bit of resistance right around the uh, the three ten, three thirty ish area, but uh, above there, it's uh, you you know, if you just saw that massive move on Bitcoin, you're gonna you're likely to see one here as well. And, so uh, where would you yeah. where would you put that move if if you know in a best case scenario for Ethereum if it quote unquote ripped? Okay, all right. Now we're getting, <laughs> now we're getting up there. All right, um, I like it. So it, you know, if I had if I had to make a guess, the next big area of interest, if if we were to break this area, which I think is actually quite likely, um, again, separating opinion from technical analysis, still have to be a little bit uh, a little bit more you know reserved, in, you know, in what you say. Um, I would say a move towards about three eighty would be quite likely um, in the more short term and overall. Uh, that would set this thing up for you know a very constructive move, which over time, and this is you know I, I want to be very specific with with how I relate time frames now, uh, not happening anytime soon, but over this next you know year, year and a half, whatever it might be, um, you know likely back up into the you know definitely definitely back up around five hundred dollars and likely back up around eight hundred dollars you know over that time frame as well, um, creating a nice constructive uh, nice constructive chart. But again, going to depend on what Bitcoin does. So I, I do want to remind myself to talk about the importance of watching Bitcoin, just because if uh, it, Bitcoin is the easier chart to read right now, and if Bitcoin does take any sort of a um, any sort of a fall, any sort of a uh, you know you know if we see any sort of uncertainty in it, if 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 I don't know whatever might happen, if Donald Trump comes out and says you know Bitcoin's banned and we're going to kill anyone who uses Bitcoin, that's going to create a problem. You know, <laughs> again, talking about the variability in markets, um, but uh, but overall. Uh, does look like a damn good setup so far. I mean, looking at the monthly right here, we just spoke about Bitcoin. And, and my big thing is getting this monthly to close above this yellow 21, just like we saw in Bitcoin over here last month, closes above and then just powerful move, extremely powerful move. Uh, I'd be looking at, you know, something similar for uh, for Mr. Buterall. Um, you know, this, you know, from a monthly look, it would suggest we really don't have too much stopping us from 450. Uh, so you heard, you heard it, guys. Very easy, guaranteed, th <laughs> guaranteed three X on your money. Throw it all into oh, Ethereum. Jesus Obviously, man. there were some. There were some. That was a joke, by the way. Uh, there were some uh, fundamental factors that were changing about Ethereum. Of course, last time that Ethereum uh, ripped up to these levels, it was the coin you needed to invest in ICOs. Very much not the case anymore, um, as there's been a huge diversification in, in the token sale landscape, and there's significantly less ICO activity in the cryptocurrency space. So there's a lot of fundamental drivers that are that are absent from Ethereum right now that were present on the last bull run. So keep that in mind as you look right. at Ethereum. Um, right, right. And, and I do want to take a second to say that uh, when I'm when I'm talking about these things, I'm purely speaking about charts. When it comes to fundamentals, um, 
I, I'll put it this way. I'm not a fundamental analyst. I, I'm not a programmer. I can't look into the code of Ethereum and tell you it's good or it's bad. But the people that I do trust to do those sorts of things, they're not. They have their doubts. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. They have their doubts. All right. Well, let's move on to some of these other uh, top, top investment opportunities. Uh, EOS uh, and Tron, Cardano uh, and Bitcoin Cash have all been really top. You know, I guess Stellar and, and, and Rip, uh, Ripple and Stellar as well. If you want to quickly just breeze through some of these uh, some of these top coins that people are always very interested in, I think it would illuminate uh, and really give a lot of benefit to the audience. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's uh, start off with EOS. I do remember this looking at this one earlier today, and it is it is one when we're talking about relative strength. This one is relatively strong, actually. Um, looking at this chart, we already have the golden cross right over here. We are above all major movement averages. I have no problem with that, as long as this thing maintains about five eighty seven. I like it from this perspective, but I, I have a feeling this conversation is more long term oriented. So looking at the weekly, um, again above all major movement averages here, about to get a bullish cross between the between the yellow and the uh, and the green. I do like what I see, man. Um, very good close last week, and does look like it wants to have a little bit of continuation in the more in the more immediate term. Which when we're looking at a weekly means like you know over the next month month or so maybe uh perhaps back up to this region uh, about eight bucks low eight dollars a share up longer term the beautiful thing about some like eos compared to some like uh ethereum is that it doesn't have as much price action history and because it doesn't have as much price action history it doesn't have as much resistance to choose to, to chew through yep so calling more long-term analysis on something like this is is actually not something that i feel very comfortable with i don't think you know i just don't think that it can really be done but you know, uh, you know, after nine, after, sorry, after eight dollars, looking at somewhere right around, I think it's going to find some comfort around the uh, the nine and a half to ten dollar region, and uh, and from there, I mean, this thing, you know, again, there, there's just not too much here. I mean, looking at the volume profile, this thing, anything above eight dollars, once again, that can rip. And yep. We have a we actually have a very nice volume profile being built up um, over you know over a decent amount of period of time now too. So this one this one does actually look good over a long period of time. Again, not speaking towards the fundamentals of it or anything like that. I don't know, but uh, but purely looking at charts, it's a damn good reaction. I'll tell you that. And EOS, what of course, of, and from a fundamental perspective, EOS uh, has some of the most activity, most development of any blockchain. Certainly promising and exciting from a fundamental perspective. They have a lot of uh, venture capital fund behind them. Uh, they are uh, definitely positioned as one of the leading blockchain platforms, in my opinion. Um, so hearing that they have a bullish looking chart is always very exciting, especially when you're looking at uh, targets that show huge percentage gains, you know, anywhere uh, up to 100 and beyond percent gains. You know, we're certainly not looking at those types of jumps for Bitcoin right now. So that's kind of interesting and certainly what's so attractive about altcoins. Um, thanks for the EOS coverage. Let's uh, you want to breeze on to some of these other favorites. Yeah. What do you want to look at? Uh, Tron? Tron uh, we'll check out Tron Cash, uh, a little TRX. Alrighty. Yeah, um, this one not not as strong as EOS. E e EOS certainly a lot stronger. Tron, Tron a little bit different, but overall, I'd, I would be looking at the next move towards uh, three spots seven five, somewhere in this region right here is where it's likely to find some comfort. Um, higher time frames uh, for what is we really don't have too much of a higher time frame to look at here. Uh, again, there's just not too much history to be going off of here. So anything above anything above like three spot eight, uh, this thing can rip. So three spot nine, any anything above there. Um, and just for some comparative percentages, uh, when you're saying it's right now at you know oh, yeah, we, two and two 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 spot seven cents, and it goes up to you know four cents or more, you're talking about some pretty right. drastic a, percentage gains, right? You know? 38% gain is always a 38% gain, no matter how what your dollar number is. And uh, and above this region right here, I, you know, again, going on to that conversation of you know not being around for too long is actually a little bit a little bit of a good thing for this one, just because it's it's not gonna have all that much chew through. I, again, it can rip. Uh, I don't see. I'm gonna sound crazy, man, but I don't really see too much stopping it from this area right here, uh, eight spot seven. You know, and and then at that point, it's. You know, you know, we're going to be in a completely different market at that point. So, you know, going further on beyond that, I can't really speak. I, I can't really, in good faith, speak to that. Um, but I'd imagine that, you know, likely goes into a blue sky breakout over time. This is very obviously a reversal pattern over a long, you know, over the past uh, six months, six August, right over here. So this one has built up a good base. And this is what you're seeing in the better performing cryptocurrencies. They're building up these bases and they're rallying off them. And then you're looking at their long-term trajectory and, and, and comparing it with Bitcoin. And these ones, you know, kind of stick out as the more strong. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that I try to reinforce and why I speak mostly on this channel about 
top 50, top 30, top 10 coins is because right now, the market has been thrashed in such a way that you do not need to go to page three of coin market cap to find ex <laughs> ex extraordinary <laughs> gains you don't need to go to the micro caps these much more major projects and you can have your opinions on tron you can have your opinions on eos ethereum any of these coins but the amount of percentage gains you can get off these coins are dramatic and you certainly don't need to go too far down the cryptocurrency list to find uh, what would be a transformative trade opportunity if this thing rips up to 10 cents you would have had almost a 4x on your money and that's you know we're talking about a top mm -hmm. on any given day a top 10 coin with some of the most employees of any company in the industry so very interesting stuff and i appreciate the tron uh, tron analysis one thing i find actually very interesting is moving over to bitcoin cash which has been an extremely yeah. high performer um, i'm very interested yep. on how a strong one. how authentic has this rally been because you know we all know that bitcoin cash has some very powerful people behind it how authentic are these rallies? Um, obviously, it was extremely, I guess, oversold and and just extremely uh, overextended when it hit its bear, you know, low in the of the bear market in December. But it has done superbly, I think, better than I had imagined over the last few months. Yeah, one of the stronger ones, absolutely. And again, on the topic of conversation, you know, am I talking about fundamentals here? No, <laughs> I, I'm not. You know, probably not the biggest fan of something like this. But um, as far as charts go, yes, absolutely, very strong. And uh, again, another thing that you know, more immediately, probably looking at five hundred dollars, five six hundred dollars a share, and then above there, it's again, there's just not anything stopping something like this. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit at uh, twelve hundred, but overall. Um, you know the mark. You know the strong. The strong are are gonna are gonna tell you that they're strong pretty damn soon. And going back to your conversation about what you're just saying, in the traditional markets, a big saying was the strong get stronger and the weak get weaker. And I know that it's very sexy and seductive to look at you know these far away altcoins that have like mark market caps that you can count with like five numbers or or even six, and uh, and that's great. But when we're talking about markets. You usually want to go with the strong as they are the leaders and uh, and typically speaking it's the junk that rallies last so it's usually not a good sign when you see you know page 10 random altcoin here chain whatever the fuck uh you know rallying that's that that's that's a bad sign that's telling that the market cycle is you know nearing its end yeah and and in the end that's not investing that's gambling you know you, if, if, <laughs> if this is all gambling man and, and and yeah you could say it's all gambling right because there's there's so many factors beyond your control there's you know Bitcoin could get banned and 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 I don't believe that would shut it down forever. But if the United States government says, you know, you hold Bitcoin, you're going to jail, that would have an impact on the market for sure. So um, at, oh, le yeah. at least in the short to midterm, it might take another 10 to 20 years for Bitcoin to achieve its goals if, if that were the case. But regardless, uh, yeah. yeah, going going too far down the list is, is essentially gambling. Could you thousand X your money uh, or at least briefly have the chance to exit at, at some extraordinary multiple? Yes, but you could also go to the casino know and put it on black or put it on number 32 and and 36 x your money right there um so it's it's kind of to me a, about the same when you look at those extremely micro cap coins uh because there's no guarantees doesn't matter how strong the team is doesn't matter how strong the uh, white papers are until you have that actual uh utility usage and and true commercial value you're just you're really just throwing things on uh, blindly on a wish whereas these stronger projects um, you know, if you believe that the market survives and starts to thrive, then you're sort of looking at more of a probabilities in the in in higher percentage ranges than you are uh, for those micro caps. So, right, right. What do you see exactly. as some targets here for uh, Bitcoin Cash? For uh, for for good old B Cash, um, you know, more immediately, probably around uh, five sixty, five seventy. Um, longer term, I'd say that its next big point of uh, contention is going to be somewhere right around this area here, around the low 1000s, about 1150. And we're, I, I really want to fade what I'm saying right now because we're talking about like very stuff that's very far away. I'm not saying that this is happening today, tomorrow, the next day. We're talking about stuff that if, if it is going to happen, this is, you know, probably like half a year, a year away, something like that. Um, it is going to take its time, you know, even if Bitcoin really does start getting ramped up and all that good stuff. Uh, I do want to fade expectations because what I fear is that someone's going to hear this and then immediately go all in on one of these things, which, of course, you know, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, but remember, you know, everything pretty much follows Bitcoin. So if you do so, and I do strongly feel about Bitcoin having a 30 to 40 percent retracement soon. So uh, these ones are not going to be immune or unlikely to be immune from that, I will say. 
Correct, and most of them trade against Bitcoin, and their dollar uh, right. their dollar uh, value is derived. It's not actually direct. So very very good to keep in mind that their Satoshi value will most likely you know hold it to some degree, and that's why they fade uh, or they drop dramatically with the market. Well, I think this has been yeah. absolutely phenomenally uh, enlightening. Another great stream here. Uh, just to summarize, what is your next big move as a trader? What are you looking for for your next big position? And of course. Uh, what do you want to leave the audience with as some final parting words of wisdom? Yeah, so just kind of wrap it up what I'm saying right here. Um, talking about Bitcoin once again. Do strongly believe that we're going to have a 30 to 40 percent retracement. I do not have a strong feeling. I do not have a strong opinion if it's going to be from our current area right here. If we do take that next leg up towards the 9500-ish region first, um, the way that I will know from a technical analysis standpoint, as much as you can ever know, because you never can, you know, you can never be, you'd be truly sure, right? Is uh, if we break this area right here about 6900 to the downside, I would be looking for a move ultimately down into the mid to low 5000s. Um, and if we break this area right here to the upside about 8300, then I would be looking. For ultimately for a move towards that 95, 9,600-ish area. Is this going to happen overnight? Nope, not at, not at all. It's, you know, it's, it's going to give you time. And, uh, and, and of course, we do get to around that 95, maybe 10,000-ish area. Then I'd be looking for that retracement to be into the upper 5,000s, lower 6,000s-ish area. So I would, uh, you know, overall, I do think that um, Bitcoin has kind of proved itself here. I would still be cognizant of, you know, volatility in the market. And, uh, and of course, you are longer-term minded. Just keep that in mind. Um, and, uh, and tomorrow, uh, of course, going to be a massive thing with the ETF decision. So I do imagine that the market will move on that. As far as my overall message, I do want to have a message of just, you know, of, of again, caution. Um, you know, a, a caution in long-term mindedness. You know, understand who you are, at, you know, as an investor, trader, whatever it might be. Uh, the best practices that I've found in my life are to actually have like a trading journal and just write down my thoughts, write down, you know, at, you know all my purposes and, and what I'm looking for. And then you can have like a true north principle to go off because what I fear is that a lot of people get into the FOMO like mentality, and uh, that's the kind of person who's you know is going to buy at ten thousand, then we come back down, you know, something like that, and it's just it's it's a never ending cycle, right? So with that in mind. Um, you know, I would say that I feel very comfortable with having a bullish bias on Bitcoin overall, as long as we maintain above this critical 5,400-ish pivot. And I, I did kind of, I feel like I did, did my, do my, uh, I did do a little bit of a disservice by not mentioning this. Hey, if Bitcoin does take out 53 to 5,400 to the downside, uh, we're going to see a lot more downside. And this is going to bring back up the discussion of, uh, of the fun part of is low in or not. And I believe that we would see at the very least back down to about 4,250. So, you know, as long as we're above this area right here, you can run with that assumption, which does mean as far as a long-term minded thing, as far as what I'm looking for, I will be scaling into my longer term positions or scaling more of my trading account back into the market, uh, aka just, you know, buying some more Bitcoin for, for long-term HODL. Uh, if we can get right around here, not because it's a 100% guaranteed trade. No, that's not the purpose. There, there's never something like that. And if someone tells you that, you know, run the other fucking way, man, that's crazy. But because if I can get in anywhere around here, I don't have to risk all that much to find out if this is going to be right or wrong. Because uh, I know that the second that we go back down below about uh, 5,200, 5,100, uh, we're going to go much lower. So, uh, so I would say, you know, it's it's you know it's a good time in the market as far as uh, as far as higher time frames look. Everything looks fine. You know, month monthly is the only thing that's technically not an uptrend, but again a technicality so you know long-term minding this thing with this whole with, with this whole deal uh will you know will go a long way so perspective as always and uh, a pleasure to be here mr elliot and fud and fud tv nation thank you so much for coming on if you guys are new and you have not yet experienced an eric crown stream i highly highly recommend you head over to crown's crypto cave crown with a k uh he's got some amazing courses he actually will let you own, possess, and manipulate, or not manipulate, but benefit from the jewel indicator which he has created and customized for your benefit. Head over there. I highly, highly recommend it. If you're serious about understanding these markets on a daily basis and you want to actually pursue the dream of becoming a trader yourself, achieving the freedom to go live wherever you want in the world and uh, you know <laughs> benefit from these markets, I highly recommend going over and checking out Crown's channel and definitely subscribing and checking out some of the offerings that he has over there. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Your expertise is very much appreciated and we hope to have you back soon. Absolutely, man. And take care, everyone.
Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment in the comment section and hit that like button. Of course, if you're not already subscribed to FUD TV, I encourage you to hit that sub button and click that little bell notification. I'm Elio Trades, you're watching FUD TV, and we'll see you very soon on the next episode.